Time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. The newly elected Joe Biden in November of 2020 vowing to be a president for every American after years of growing partisanship. But nearly two years later, polarization is at its worst. And that's why scholars from around the country partnered together recently to take an analytical look at how to bridge the partisan gap in America with an experiment called the Strengthening Democracy Challenge. And joining us now, one of the leaders of that study, professor and director of the Polarization and Social Change Lab at Stanford University, Rob Willer. And Rob, I'm curious how this study was conducted. What did you analyze, especially given that in the past year we've we've seen violence erupt. Yeah, so we were uh, uh, very interested in that problem of high levels of uh, anti-democratic attitudes, partisan animosity, and also, uh, you know, some some significant levels of support for political violence. So we wanted to test as many ideas as we could. We tested 25 ideas in a massive survey experiment, sort of like a public opinion poll. And uh, we got some really, I think, helpful insights trying to build a toolbox for intervening on these problems. Right. So what worked? Yeah. Well, tell us. You know, one of the best ideas that we that we tested was uh, a video that we showed people before asking them about their democratic attitudes that showed scenes of unrest and violence in the streets in uh, countries that were dealing with democratic collapse before then showing mm-hmm. footage from the Capitol riot uh, from just last year and drawing a sort of straight line through uh, to, to show we maybe are on the precipice of of some sort of democratic collapse, and we should not take for granted the stability that we've enjoyed here for, you know, 160 years. Uh, And that one, I think, uh, offers an insight that if people had a better sense of what was at stake in defending our democratic norms and and laws, that they they would, uh, you know, hold to democratic principles more. Professor, we've been talking all morning about a party that says we are at war, that says we are at war with the FBI, we are at war with the IRS, we are at war with the radical left. How do you step back from that when it's not just cranks on the Internet, it's the leadership of the Republican Party saying these things? If you get in and talk to people, do you think we're able to get out of this? Yeah, that kind of rhetoric is incredibly dangerous. It has a, a huge amount of influence on the attitudes of people in the rank and file, everyday voters, uh, you know, in this case, Republican voters. One of the other interventions we found that is sort of the opposite of that kind of rhetoric and was effective for uh, restoring Americans, uh, including Republican voters, commitment to democracy was a short video that the two Utah gubernatorial candidates filmed uh, in 2020 leading up to the election where they they both committed to uh, to honor the results of the election and committed to you know the democratic process. And it's even kind of touching to see these rival candidates that are at some level competing getting together, doing an ad spot, cooperating and saying, hey, we agree on the rules of the game. We have different ideas about how to run the state, but we agree on the basic rules of the game. And I think if more candidates did that in more elections, that could make a difference to helping Americans see that at some level we have to cooperate here, even as we compete. Director of the Polarization and Social Change Lab at Stanford University, Rob Willer. Thank you very much, Professor. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, Joe, um, as we're uh, you know leading up to this hearing today, at the documents, most um, most experts say that we won't see anything from the search warrant uh, beyond what we already know about what happened at Mar-a-Lago. Well, we probably won't. And, and Willie, if you listen to what Elise had to say, what uh, Mark Zaid had to say, um, there is a concern that uh, this may uh, not uh, be significant enough uh, to justify uh, a search of a former president's home. So there is going to be a delicate balance moving forward, yeah. isn't there, uh, between, again, helping the DOJ have the space they need to develop whatever investigation they're developing, but at the same time, having some transparency. Yeah, we'll see. We probably won't see today in that affidavit. It sounds like they won't unseal that, but because it may not turn out to be something doesn't mean you don't investigate a president of the United States taking documents out of the White House to his Mar-a-Lago resort.